Hi, my name is Hannah and welcome to my channel. I am doing something a little different today that I'm very excited to do. So what I've done is I went through all the books that I have read and put on Goodreads in the past five years. And then I sorted them out by author to see what books have I read that have been by the same author and I didn't even realize it. I'm not great at keeping track and I wanted to know what authors have I read and are they authors that I like or am I consistently reading books that I didn't like? I just kind of wanted to see my patterns. So I made a list of all the authors that I'd read more than one book from and I left out anything that was a series. This was a problem. I ended up with more than 60 authors on my list. So I tried to whittle it down to give you some recommendations of authors that I've enjoyed or at least some authors that I would be open to reading more from in the future. So let's jump into that. So to keep this simple, I went through and here's a list of some of, not all of them, but the books that I have read two books from the author and both books were five star books when I rated them. So um, let's start out. I've got Ya Gyasi and I gave both of her books, Homegoing and Transcendent Kingdom, I gave both of those five stars. I thought that they had just some amazing scope and human feeling and they were focused on um, protagonist from Ghana and I thought that was very interesting. It has been a while since I've read books by her and I would be open to reading more. Um, the next one is definitely a favorite, Patrick Radden Keefe. He has written two of my very favorite nonfiction books, Say Nothing and Empire of Pain. I just think he has a way of making nonfiction so compelling that you can't put the book down while being very well researched and very informative. So highly recommend Patrick Radden Keefe. I read some books by Erin Morgenstern and she gets two five stars, The Starless Sea and The Night Circus. I just thought they were really beautiful magical fantasy books. It just really was that perfect transport me away from my life into a magical realm kind of fantasy. So I really liked those books. Along with that, I've loved both books by T.J. Klune, um, The House in the Cerulean Sea and Under the Whispering Door. I just found them to be light and fun and escapist but at the same time meaningful and poignant and so I just I loved those ones. I had Little Fires Everywhere and Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Ng and both of those get five stars from me. It has been quite some time since I read those so I don't know how I would do if I read them now but I remember just feeling like she was very good at making all the characters feel fully realized and fully human even when they had lives so different from mine I still felt for them and I still felt like all the characters even when they were doing horrible things I understood why and I felt I really felt for them so I thought she was really good at that um I also read um I read okay I gave two to five stars to Diane Setterfield um it's the 13th tale and once upon a river and I just don't remember these super well so take that with a grain of salt but from what I remember they were really engaging and like broad scope fiction and I would be interested to read more books from her because it has been a long time on those ones. It's been a while but I read two books by Sally Rooney. I gave one of them two stars and one of them one stars. Conversations with friends and normal people. It's been three years since I read these books so I don't remember them very well but maybe, I mean, maybe that just shows that they weren't that great, but I obviously didn't like that. So I had a book by Sally Rooney on my to be, to be read list and I just removed it. So um, if you disagree with me on that, let me know because it has been a while since I read books by her. Now we get into some good authors that I've read more than two books by them. Didn't even realize it. Um, I read some books by Elizabeth Acevedo and I gave two of them four stars and one a five star. So obviously kind of strong, at least in my book, um, with The Fire on High, The Poet X, and Clap When You Land. And she writes these really pretty, like, inverse kind of novels. And it's very poetic. Um, they're young adults and talking about difficult subjects, but in a really beautiful way. And I feel like that's the kind of books we want young adults to read. Things that have some meaning and are well written and are 
beautiful to read but they are aimed towards a young adult audience so I did really like her books and I would be interested in more of those. I really have enjoyed Frederick Bachman and his books. I gave five stars to Anxious People and A Man Called Uwe and I gave four stars to My Grandmother Asked Me To Tell You. Um, she's Sorry. Those are all really good books. I look forward to any books by him. I would be happy to read more. I don't consistently rate David Sedaris books super high, but I will always read a David Sedaris book. They're just fun, humor, reflections on his life, and I'm on hold for one right now at the library, and I just, I really enjoy David Sedaris and his writing. It's relatable and cute and fun. It's been a while, but I read um, three books by Sue Monk Kidd. I read Secret Life of Bees, An Inven The Invention of Wings, and The Book of Longings. And I feel like these were all really impressive, and some of them like fiction and historical fiction, and I really liked them. Like, they stuck with me. It's one of those where at the time I wasn't too sure about them, but they're still in my head now. So I would be interested to read more books by her. I thought that this was a like, she's done a good job. Now, here's some more authors that I wanted to mention. They didn't all get the perfectly consistent great ratings from me, but I would be interested in maybe picking up more from them if um, I got a good recommendation. So I read a book by Ibi Zoboy, and so I read three books by her. One of them I gave five stars. Um, I think that was Punching the Air, and then I also gave two three stars which was American Street and Pride and they are like young adult books talking about struggles of people of color and it focuses on like family and interpersonal drama and I don't know why I rated American Street so low because that's actually kind of stuck in my head even though it's been quite a few years since I read it so I'm not sure if I just was not feeling it at the time or if it's if I went back and read it again it's not that great but like She's got some interesting things and um, very important things to say, so I would be interested in maybe picking up a book from her again. Um, in a similar vein, I also really, I liked some of the books by Jacqueline Woodson. I read three books, um, two of them I gave like four stars and one three star. Um, I read Miracles Boys, Brown Girl Dreaming, Red at the Bone. The first two are young adult books and they talk a lot about family drama and racial struggles in the U.S. and it's just those are ones that I read in 2018 and 2019 so it has been a little while and I don't remember them super well but I might be interested in picking up another. This one's a little controversial for me. I like, I really liked um, Taylor Jenkins Reid. She wrote the Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six, and I really liked those books. I just didn't really like Malibu Rising as much. I didn't connect with it very well, and I thought it was a little disappointing. So I don't know if I want to read any more by her, but you know, I would be open to trying because I really liked the other two, but just that one was a little bit of a disappointment for me. I think my expectations might have been too high. Lane Moriarty, um, she wrote Nine Perfect Strangers, Big Little Lies, and What Alice Forgot. Those are the ones I read, and I gave them like four or three stars. The It explores a lot of characters and their secrets and how they all come together, and that's, that's fun. Like, it's fun reads, um, kind of personality-driven dramas. Finally, I want to mention Ishiguro Kazuo, and I mean, I gave like three, four stars for all the books that I read. I read Never Let Me Go, The Remains of the Day, The Buried Giant, Clara and the Sun, and some of these I got to the end and I was like, what What on earth did I just read? But for the most part, I just find, found them to be like fiction that was very unique, very different. Um, things that I just wouldn't quite have thought. I mean, The Remains of the Day is just following like an old-timey butler the whole time and um could be a little boring or like Clara and the Sun is kind of sci-fi and the buried giant is a little bit fantasy and I feel like it's a lot of different genres but just kind of a very unique take and a very unique perspective so I would probably be interested in more from Ishiguro Kazuo. 
If you have made it this far in the video, I have a job for you. Please leave a comment below with if you have read any books by these authors. If you have, what have you read and is it worth reading? I would really love to hear from you because I don't know, should I keep going with some of these authors? Do you agree with me on which authors are good or are th do you hate some of these ones? I'm interested to hear. So please leave me a comment down below um, and let me know what you thought of this video. It's a bit of a different format and I will be back with a book wrap up probably in the next few days by the end of March.